Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Mrs. Peel had been convinced that the real John Steed was alive and hiding in the grounds of Baron von Kurtz's country home. The peace conference had broken up in confusion, but no one had been hurt. Mrs. Peel had helped herself to a car and driven to the spot where Steed said he would be hiding. But when Mrs. Peel arrived, it was Perova, disguised and looking exactly like Steed, who stepped from behind the trees. Oh, you have brought me a car. How very thoughtful. Please. I am afraid not. The rover raised a revolver, pointed it straight at Mrs. Peel. His finger tightened on the trigger. At that moment, the Baron crashed his way through the bushes, sword in hand, and made one powerful lunge. <laughs> he fooled me. For one moment, I thought it was the real steed. I think we have to face it, Emma, my dear. The real steed must be dead. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user, because it gets out the worst dirt and stains. Mrs. Francis of Port Elizabeth found that Omo cleaned her husband's bathing trunks. She used to come home and they'd be marked and splodged with tar and uh, oil from our beaches. Well, he wanted to throw them away, so I said, well, he'd soak them over now from cold water Omo. And the next day they were shimmering hot again. Cold water Omo cleans best. Over a million South African housewives have proved it. Walls Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We've got strawberry and vanilla, half and half. That's on inside. White milky chocolate the way you like. All over the outside. We're Walls Pink Pussycat uh -huh. now. <laughs> Sixth and final episode in this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel defeat all their many enemies and quit sunny Spain to the sound of too many Olays. <laughs> Steed was sure he'd persuaded Mrs. Peel that he was alive and well, and quite genuinely wished to escape from Captain Jose's men in order to return to the bullring and arrest Arcos and Markin, the two responsible for the plan to wreck the peace conference. The plan to blow up the delegates had nearly succeeded, and it was only by lucky timing that Steed had managed to get the bomb out of the conference room and explode it harmlessly in the grounds. But Captain Jose didn't appreciate this and had given orders that anyone looking like John Steed should be shot on sight. Unfortunately, this included Steed himself. Now that Perova was dead and Mrs. Peel convinced she had been fooled by him, Steed was once more on his own. He found this out the moment he innocently hailed Mrs. Peel and the Baron from near the borrowed car. Over here, Mrs. Peel, over here. There's another one of them. Well, I'm not getting fooled again. Let's get him. <laughs> Mrs. Peel let fly with a barrage of shots. Steed ducked out of the way. Oh, even your best friends won't tell you if they believe in you or not. I've got to get out of this. Steed made it to the other side of the car, ducked into it, started it up, and drove as quickly as he could down the driveway. Come on, Emma. My car's just down the drive after him. He mustn't get away. Come on. A short while after that, two cars raced up the main road towards the Tarragon Bull Ring. Steed in the first. Well, they made it. Just. The 
the Baron and Mrs. Peel in the second car. Ole, don't want to lose him. I think I know where he's heading. Before he persuaded me to steal that car for him, he pitched me a long explanation about the true villains of the piece hiding in a deserted bullring. Ah, then if that is so, I know the spot. Baron, I'm so confused. Why should that man tell me his plans? How did he manage to know so much about my private life? Does he know about your private life? How much? A darn sight too much. Things I didn't even think the real Steve would remember. Even down to the sort of food I like. <laughs> Careful! I like paella, but I don't want to end up like one. Not much, Father. Hold on, here we go. We'll beat him even yet. Steve may have made up his mind to get Arcos and Mark in, but Arcos had ideas of his own. He'd been at work with the transformation kit, this time on his own face. Arcos, are you all right under that mask? See, <laughs> see, si. si. I think I'm fine. It is working. It should be set by now, surely. Come on out from under there. I, I removed the mask, so... There. Yeah. And how do I look? Like all the other versions, exactly like John Steed, but but why? <laughs> Simple. Everyone will be searching for me as the man who succeeded in blowing out the delegates at the conference. No one will question John Steed. Once we killed him, I shall be free to impersonate Steed back in London. Think of the information I shall be able to sell to foreign powers. Millions. I shall be a very, very rich man indeed. Ah, clever. <laughs> I admit you are clever, Omri. Now, as to adjust the rest of my appearance, the London suit, the bowler, and the umbrella, uh, uh, and I am Steve complete. <laughs> yeah. So while I do so, you had better go up into the ring and see that all is well. Yeah. Dr. Verno and Smanoff are doing guard duty. If anything suspicious occurs, inform me immediately. Go quickly, Mark in, CC. I go, I go. <laughs> John Steed made the bull ring just a few minutes ahead of the Baron and Mrs. Peel. He screeched his car to a halt at the back of the stands. Jumped out and rushed down the corridor and out into the ring. Berno and Smanov spotted him. There he goes. He crossed the ring towards the entrance to the headquarters. Get him, get him. Steed tore across the hot sand, the bullets splattering themselves around his feet. He made the other side of the barrier and plunged down the tunnel that led to the underground room. The two men were after him. He got there just in time, slammed the heavy door and locked it. Open! Open it door. It's not open! Up in the bullring, the Baron and Mrs. Peel, having arrived and parked their car next to Seeds, entered cautiously from the far side. Markin spotted them and raised his gun. Down! Hold this fire, Emma. I'll try and get him from the other side. Work my way round. Right! Verno and Sparnoff, hearing the firing, gave up banging on the door and returned to the action. Mrs. Peel kept Markin's attention while the Baron, sword in hand, edged his way along the rows of deserted seats. But Verno spotted him. There! There, Markin, behind you! Look out! What? I... Oh, you... The Baron raised his sword as Markin was about to take aim and threw it like a spear. It whistled through the air, catching Markin in the chest. <laughs> While all this was going on in the hot sunlight, Steed, back under the bull ring in the enemy headquarters, tried to adjust his eyes to the gloom. In the shadows stood the figure of Arcos. He held a gun. Arcos? <laughs> Steed, return. Yes, the game is up, Arcos. You hear the sounds of pursuit? I have friends. They'll be here at any moment. You've lost, Arcos. Not Arcos. Take a good look, Steed. Arcos stepped out of the shadows. Steed found himself looking down the wrong end of a gun and then staring into his own face. You are amazed. My last line of defense... A nice touch of irony about it, don't you think? Now I am you. Like a drink. Arcos moved forward and, not taking his eyes off Steed or moving his gun off him, placed a tankard of wine on the table. Drink. It will be your last. You see, there cannot be two of us. That would never do. Cheers. 
Uh, did I ever tell you how I clobbered your man, Markin? It was simple. I threw wine in his face. <laughs> Steve threw the wine at Arcos. It blinded him for a second, and in that second, Steve grappled for the gun. <laughs> the gun went off. The bullet caught Arcos in the shoulder. Steve slipped and crashed to the floor. Arcos, clutching his wound, staggered for the door, unlocked it, and made for the open, where a battle royal was going on between the Baron and Verno. They both had claimed swords and were fighting it out in the middle of the ring. Come, my friend. The odds are equal. I kill you. I, I kill you like the fool. Not like that. Ole. Uh, ole it is, crumbsy fool. Mrs. Peel, without any sword and out of ammunition, had tackled Smanoff. Using a matador's cape, she held him at bay with ease. Ole! 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 Arcos, staggering into the light, was seen by Markin, who lay nearly dead by the side of the ring. Steed. Steed. I'll get Steed if it is the last thing I do. Markin reached out a blood-stained hand and found his gun. He raised himself on one shoulder and took careful aim. No! No, Markin! I am not Steed! I am Arcos! At that moment, the Baron came to Mrs. Peel's rescue and made short work of his duel with Smanoff. <laughs> It is good work, Baron. John Steed stepped out into the bull ring. Uh, there's another of them. Let's get him. No! No, that's the real Steed. But, but, but how can you tell? Well, who else would smile at a time like this? John Steed advanced across the sand, and he was smiling. Ole, Steed. Ole, Steed. You know, I think there have been too many Olays and no off hellos. Hello, Mrs. Peel. Hello, Steed. <laughs> Later, very much later, Emma Peel was lying on a beach towel in a bikini. Alongside, in swimming trunks, was John Steed. She was smoothing oil on herself. Steed appeared asleep. Steed? Mm. You were right, you know, about it not being a real holiday. Our job was to attend the peace conference as official observers. Just that and nothing else. That was our duty. Not to go gadding about all over Spain. Mm. Lazing around on a beach, sunning ourselves. Ridiculous. Irresponsible. Unpatriotic, even. All the same, I think it was a bit mean of Mother to insist we come back here the very next day. Mm, maybe. Do you want me to adjust the sun lamp near you? Steed stretched up an arm and moved the sun lamp in Mrs. Peel's apartment so that it glowed down on the towel that protected the carpet. As he did so, Mrs. Peel looked out of the window at the grey London sky. You know something, Steed? I think it's going to rain again. I was a girl, hard, harsh rubbing was always good enough for my bathtub. So what's changed? What changed? Surfaces have changed. They can't take hard rubbing. They need Handy Andy care. Modern baths and all other modern surfaces need Handy Andy, liquid cleaner with active ammonia. Use Handy Andy straight from the bottle. It lifts dirt without hard rubbing or scratching. Surfaces have changed. It's time I changed to Handy Andy, too. There's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Gray of Durban has this to say. Uh, I couldn't even explain it. it. It astounded me. I was really and truly very astounded. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omos.